Another one of the many really beautiful and mysterious ideas that goes along with online encryption and cryptography is this idea of what's known as a zero knowledge proof. A zero knowledge proof is a way for me to prove to you that I know something without revealing any information about that thing itself. So that's where the zero knowledge comes from. This is very different than proving a theorem or something like that. Zero knowledge proofs emerged out of research into what are known as interactive proof systems. So an interactive proof is a process by which two parties, typically known as the prover and the verifier, um, engage in some sort of back and forth process by which they come to some conclusion. So the prover either proves to the verifier something or does not. Now, early work on this assumed that the verifier was trustworthy, but eventually somebody raised this question, well, what if the verifier is not trustworthy? Um, what if the prover needs to be able to prove something to the verifier without revealing that information? So. Let's look at an example here, and this is an example that allows us to return to our ideas of public key uh, cryptography and reinforce those again. So I've got Alice and Bob, except in this case, let's say that Bob is not quite sure that Alice is who she says she is. Alice says that she's Alice, or let's say that someone has approached Bob and said, I want to communicate with you, I'm Alice, and Bob says, I'm not sure that you're Alice, I want to prove, I want you to prove to me that you're Alice. So what's the thing that Alice is supposed to know that Bob doesn't? Well, that's her private key. So Alice's private key is something that the real Alice will know, but any imposter Alice's will not know. The question is, how can Alice prove to Bob that she knows this without revealing the key itself? She could send the key to Bob, but then Bob would have the key and Bob could pretend to be her and decrypt her messages and do all sorts of bad things. So she needs to be able to prove to Bob, or she and Bob need to come up with a process by which Bob can determine that this is actually Alice, and Alice doesn't have to reveal any information about her private key. This is actually pretty straightforward. So here's what Bob's going to do. Bob's going to take a message, and Bob's going to come up with some sort of secret message. Um, and he's not going to tell Alice what it is. And what he's going to do is he's going to encrypt that message with Alice's public key. So he's going to take the message, um, use my standard terminology, which is M, he's going to create this encrypted message using Alice's public key, and then he's going to send that message to Alice. And then what he's going to do is he's going to ask Alice, what's the message that I sent you? So he might say, the, the text of the message might be secret message. Now remember, if Alice knows her private key, she can decrypt this message. So if it's really Alice, Alice will be able to take her private key, decrypt the message, and send back, and of course we don't want this to actually be a secret message because she's going to send it back in clear text. She would send back to Bob secret message. And Bob would say, okay, that makes sense. I, I didn't tell her what the message was, and she was able to guess. And so I know that this is Alice because Alice is able to do something that the real Alice would uh, be able to do, and that any imposter Alice would not. So what could an imposter Alice do? So an imposter Alice, what would they have to do? Well, they can't decrypt the message without Alice's public key. That's really important to remember. Without the private, sorry, without the private key. So without the private key, nobody can decrypt this message. So an imposter Alice that doesn't actually have access to Alice's private key has no idea what this message says. So they would just have to write back like, you know, um, here's my guess or something, right? I mean, you just have to make something up um, because the imposter Alice can't uh, decrypt the message. Now, there is some small probability here, and in many of these interactive proofs, there's some probability that um, Alice will get the right answer, the imposter Alice. So let's just, just say out of blind luck, let's say that Bob's message is only one character or something. So there's some probability that Alice will, the imposter Alice will guess correctly. So that probability might be small, but if Bob wants even more proof that Alice is the actual Alice and not some imposter, he could just repeat the process. So he could send, let's say that and for some reason Bob is limited to sending messages that are one character, or let's say that Bob is uh, limited to sending messages that are the numbers between one and 10. So the imposter Alice guesses she has a 10% chance of guessing correctly. But if I make her guess again, 
and again and again and again, eventually the actual Alice is going to get all the questions right and the imposter Alice is, start gonna, is going to start to miss a lot of them. So the probability that the imposter Alice can answer all the queries properly starts to drop. So this is an example of, of an interactive proof. It involves uh, communication between two parties. And at the end of this, Bob is convinced that Alice is the real Alice. And Alice has not you know, divulged any information about her private key. In many cases, such as this one, these interactive zero-knowledge proofs involve the prover, who's in this case Alice, doing something that only they could do. So in this case, only Alice can decrypt these messages that are encrypted with her public key because only she has the private key. In other zero-knowledge proofs, it's the same thing. It's sort of, you know, it, it, you uh, reveal that you can do something that only a person that was in possession of that secret information could do, but you don't reveal the secret information. So again, a really, really fascinating sort of, um, and, and to me always very mysterious aspect of cryptography, this idea that I can prove to you, I can prove something to you without revealing any information about that thing itself.